Truman, obviously he won. Justin Amash is the U.S. representative serving Michigan's third congressional district, which encompasses the Grand Rapids area. He is the second youngest member of Congress and a Tea Partier as well. I would like to <laughs> I'd like to bring up to the lectern now Congressman Justin Amash. planned speech, so I'm going to talk for a little bit, and maybe we'll take some questions. But uh, Justin Amash, some of you maybe have never uh, heard how to pronounce my last name. You can follow me on the campaign trail. It's Amash. Um, I am the uh, the youngest incoming member of the freshman class. Um, one of the things I would say is that when you look back on how I got here. Just a few years ago, in 2007, I was uh, just working as a lawyer. I wasn't involved in politics in any uh, substantial way. I worked on campaigns, volunteered, done internships, those kind of things, but I had never really thought about uh, running for office. And it was after I graduated from law school in about 2005 that uh, I was looking for uh, organizations that share the kind of share the kind of beliefs I had: limited government, free markets, individual liberty, and that's where when I came came upon the Republican Liberty Caucus. And really, uh, it's what started my movement toward running for office. I uh, was looking at the state legislature and noticing that you had two parties: Republicans and Democrats who are really voting the same way on most things. But what we hear in the media is that they're always at each other's throats, they're, they don't agree on anything, and I was, I was monitoring it. I started to pay attention and found that actually both parties were saying pretty much the same thing and voting in pretty much the same way. And so it was important for me as a person who believed in uh, the ideals of, of liberty and the Constitution and, and the rule of law in uh, a system of government that's that's not arbitrary uh, to get involved. And in Michigan, we have term limits, so uh, our state representative was term limited. I decided to run for office. And uh, I remember running for office on, on the platform of limited government, free markets, individual liberty. People thought I was crazy. People in my campaign. Um, I, I used to hear things like, how are, uh, you know, soccer moms will never support you. Or, believe it or not, a few years ago, people were saying things like, nobody knows what liberty means. Uh, this word liberty, you know, can't, people don't run on the word liberty. And uh, now, if you look at this most recent election, the word liberty is thrown about uh, left and right, and even people who don't really understand it or believe it are using it to campaign. So the world has really changed dramatically. When I got to the State House, I found exactly what uh, I had expected. The parties did vote the same way on most things. And it, it was actually uh, more surprising to me you know, how closely uh, aligned they were than, than what I expected. They were voting the same way on about 90 to 95% of the bills. And these are substantive bills. Um, substantive legislation, they're voting together 90 to 95% of the time. Now, in order to have uh, a democracy or a republic that actually works, you have to have people who have differing opinions. Why, why were they voting the same way on everything? One of the reasons was lack of transparency. Um, people at home didn't know what was going on. And when the public doesn't know what their elected, what their elected officials are doing, they're going to take the easy route. Imagine you're an elected official, and uh, a lobbyist comes up to you or your colleagues, and they say, "We'd like you to vote this way on a bill." Well, particularly, particularly if you're a state representative and nobody is following really what you're doing, uh, our, our media, for example, will cover. We had 1,314 votes during my time in the state legislature. Our media probably covered. 
couple dozen of those with any sort of detail. So if you're, uh, if you imagine you're in the state legislature and you're trying to decide how to vote on something and you're just a human being, you know, we're all human beings. Lobbyists are coming up to you, colleagues are coming up to you, they're saying, hey, vote this way. There's such an incentive built into the system to vote along with lobbyists, with your colleagues, and to ignore what's right for your constituents and what's right for our state and our country. Because if you vote according with the wishes of your colleagues or lobbyists, they're going to praise you, they're going to love it, and the people at home aren't going to even know about it. They're, gonna, they're not going to know that you just voted in a way that hurt them. And if you vote no on what your lobbyists and colleagues are asking you to vote on, those people are going to be upset with you, and the people at home aren't going to write you or thank you, or you know, they're not going to call you up and say thank you for voting no on that piece of legislation I didn't know about. <laughs> so there's a built-in incentive. And as a state representative, I voted by myself with a lone no vote more than 80 times. I don't know. Again, out of 1,314 votes. And there was who knows how many times, probably a couple hundred, where I was one of only a handful of no votes. Uh, people used to tell me, well, you, you'll never get elected that way. How are you going to run for re-election? Uh, my colleagues used to think that I wouldn't win my re-election for state representative. So then I surprised them all by announcing I'd run for Congress. And sure enough, out of the entire state legislature, and a number, number of us ran for Congress, I was the only, well, Hanson Clark won on the Democratic side in the Senate, but I was the only one in the House who won a congressional seat. And so all the people who were go with the flow, don't worry about uh, your constituents. Don't worry about the Constitution. Don't worry about the, the principles of liberty that we believe in. Uh, they lost their elections. And I was able to move on. And uh, I'm very honored to be in Congress. I don't want this to extend too long, because I want to give you guys a chance to, to ask questions um, and maybe find out a little more about me with your questions. But I'm very honored to be in Congress. I would say that the the number one problem I see right now in government is, a, is the systematic problem. It's, it's the way that the process works. We can fight all day about the substance, but if we don't fix the process, we're not going to improve anything. The fact is, when I'm on the House floor, even here in Congress, I found it's worse in Congress than at the state level. Uh, there's too many of my colleagues who don't know what we're voting on. Uh, there's too little information being given to us, and it's not a Republican or Democrat thing. It's not who's in who's in charge. It's, it's built into the system. Whichever party's in charge, we have the same bad system. I've had situations where there's been a vote on the board here in Congress. There's a vote on the board, and we don't have the document to read. It's not available. So. How are we supposed to make a decision with no document in front of us? I've had to, there's been times when I go to the Republican cloakroom asking for the, asking for the bill that we're voting on, or the motion that we're voting on, and they don't have it. And if they don't have it, nobody else has it. We, I've had to go to the uh, you know, speaker's stand, find, find the one physical copy they have for the whole house. Well, if I've got that copy in my hand, someone else doesn't have it. So, I'm the only one aware of what's going on. That's a real problem. That's a real problem. So we need to reform the process, put some more transparency into the system. If you want to limit government, you have to have a process that's open. I really believe that if people at home understand what we're doing, if my colleagues have a better understanding of what the legislation is, we're going to get a movement in the direction of liberty. We're going to get a movement in the direction of more limited government. A lot of the growth is due to this not understanding, going with the flow, and uh, and I'm hopeful. That there's been a huge upswell in this liberty movement, but again, uh, don't take people at their word. You've got to try to push the transparency. Focus on that first. Focus on the transparency and the process first. Then you'll get them to come around on the substance side. If you don't know what they're doing, you can't keep them in check. You have to know what your elected officials are doing. 
And I've got a, a Facebook page which some of you might follow, but if you're not, please, please do follow it because I explain every single vote that I take. That's something I started doing in the State House. I do it in Congress. I explain every single vote I take on the House floor. Uh, so you can follow me. It's facebook.com slash rep Justin Amash. And with, with that, I'm uh, very thankful to the Republican Liberty Caucus again for, for giving me a start here, for uh, helping me get in the right direction. And um, I'm proud that you know I can be one of uh, one of you guys who's, who's made it to Congress. So thank you so much, and I'll, I'll take some questions.